Uh, we're live. So, hey, everyone, welcome to another product school talk. Um, I'm Cassandra from product school. Um, just to make sure that you guys can see and hear me. Okay, uh, let's do a quick test here. So um, what I'd like you to do is go ahead and type in book in the comment section and we'll send you a free copy of the product book. So if you guys, uh, once you type that in, I'll know that you guys can see us. Awesome, so it looks like we're good. Um, well, as many of you know, we teach product management, coding and data at now 14 campuses. We re recently launched um, eight new campuses in Seattle, Boston, Chicago, Denver, Boulder, Austin and Toronto and London. So we're really excited about that. Um, today's speaker is going to share some insights from his experience as, um, as being a software engineer and moving into product management. So I'd like to welcome Joey Leah. Hi, Joey. Thanks for being here with us today. Hey, Cassandra. Thanks for, thanks for introducing me. Uh, hey, guys. How's it going? Hi. <laughs> um, so Joey is a senior advisor of product management at Dell EMC, and he's the leader, the leader um, in cloud infrastructure and data storage. So um, I know you have a presentation uh, set up for us today, so I'll give you a couple seconds to share that. Sure. Awesome. And um, everyone, while he's doing that, just a reminder, we're going to take some questions uh, following his presentation. So feel free to type them in the comments and we'll get to them right after. Can everybody see the presentation? Yep, it looks great. Cool. Uh, the floor is yours. Uh, so, hey guys, um, I know you guys might be coming from a variety of different backgrounds. Uh, this presentation is more specific to um, if you're an engineer who is looking to transition into product management or our recent PM who came from engin engineering background and are finding some challenges really going in your first years in, in a PM gig. Um, I wanna leave you guys with some actionable advice at the end for tips of how I transitioned, how you could make a transition. And we'll, we'll mostly talk through um, you know, my, my journey and how I can relate to what you're trying to do. About myself, so I work at EMC Corporation, now um, Dell EMC. And I've actually spent about nine to 10 years at, at, at EMC, a very long uh, career path uh, here. I started as an engineer. I wrote Python scripts. I worked on test automation. And overall, you know, I was a very um, you know, rookie person at, at the time. But I grew my career to uh, different opportunities. I became team lead. And at some point, um, I actually transitioned as the lead product manager for the same product I started on um, as an engineer. Uh, six years an engineer, four years as a product manager. Um, I helped build and release four or five, um, four to four versions as an engineer and four different releases of the product um, as a product manager. And this, this product was a very uh, mature product at the time. It was about 10 years in operation, a very large, healthy customer base, a lot of revenues. So the, the, the one crazy aspect of it was I inherited a lot of revenues to manage um, as I transitioned into the lead product management role. And it, and it certainly helps you learn a lot of different things about what you're not, what you are good at and subsequently things you're not so great at. And I wanna help you as, as an engineering, um, as an engineer, I wanna help you fill those gaps, fill those, find the strengths, find your weaknesses and how you can position yourself to land into a product management role. Now, fortunately the path to product management is there's a lot of different ways. And that's, that's a really a great thing. It's a, it's a multifaceted role. There's not any one direct path that's gonna work for anybody into a role. And there are different options. And that's really great. If, that's, if your career goal is to get into product management, it's great that you, to have a lot of options. Now, what, what I would expect from most people is if you're, you're in an engineer role today, you're probably looking for that jump start to head straight into product management. And while I'll say it's not impossible, it can be tricky and it can be a little bit difficult depending on your skill gap. Um, so some, some folks usually find a stepping stone um, opportunity, a role, or some kind of educational um, effort to really fill in the gap of how to become product manager. So for me personally, for example, I was an engineer. Um, I was promoted to team lead of, this, of, of the same team that I was working on. So my peers became my direct reports. Um, I personally did want to do an MBA program. I wanted to 
get the get a formal education in business, network with the um, I went to UCLA, so I wanted to f- formally network in the in UCLA community. Um, but it is a lot of time and money to do an MBA. So if you're thinking about an MBA for product management, uh, you do want to think about it very carefully. There's a lot of opportunity costs with doing an MBA program. At the second year of my MBA, I did formally transition into product management. And so you can kind of see here, it's a little bit of a windy road and it can be a long one for yourself. So my advice for you, if you're all thinking about different paths to product management, find a path that you're going to be happy with each step of the way. Um, You do need to find job satisfaction in each of these steps um, as you're going to find it very, very difficult, especially if your end goal is product management and you're finding yourself, you're not able to really get to that point. presentation froze. Oh, there you go. Um, So the first thing I would like you guys to kind of, uh, as a starting point, if you're starting fresh and you're thinking about product management, um, you'll want to know and be able to do an elevator pitch. An elevator pitch is a 60 second or less pitch about why you want to do something. And you're you're gonna be generally doing a lot of this in product management. You need to be able to pitch your ideas, pitch your recommendations, and you're going to need to do it in a short amount of time because most of your audiences are executives. Um, in this case, having a pitch for why you want to move to product, to product management is going to be a really good way to test and flex those skills. Um, here are some examples of some qualities that I believe are going to be pretty relevant for you. And don't be discouraged if you don't have these qualities. It takes time to really build, them, build these out realistically, especially coming um, for personally for myself, coming from an engineering background. Um, If you're one to take initiative, you find problems, you see problems, and you actually do something about them, that's going to be a great quality you can take forward. Um, Because as a product manager, you're you're not given any formal authority. You do have the title manager in your title, but you don't people manage anybody, unless you're a director, of course. But you formally won't have any authority to tell people what to do. You'll actually have to accomplish your job and your role through others. Everything that you do requires someone else's help. For that reason, you're gonna to need to take initiative to find problems that others um, are gonna to have to help you with. Engineering teams, sales teams, executive teams. Everybody is part of your team and it's gonna require a bit of initiative to actually motivate them. Another thing is if the way you look at the world. Is it that you're proud of the products you're using and technologies you're using and you like talking about technology you know, very common attributes for, for engineering folk. Um, but for product manager, the, the real attitude and, and passion you should have is for your customer. Uh, be customer first. The technology is only as useful as it is, as it drives value for a customer's problem, um, some of their needs. Uh, it's really important to not lose sight of focus that your role is to gain insight about customers and problems that they're having and bringing great technologies that can solve those problems. Um, I talked about this a little bit before, but being diplomatic is extremely important. Um, if you're the top engineer you're, and you're thinking about product management, because it is a likely, it is a logical career path forward for a lot of top engineers, um, you might be considered the smartest guy in the room. But being the smartest guy in the room is an advantage in some cases and a disadvantage because you might be tempted to n- over, over, think you know everything about the market. But the reality is you don't know everything about the market. And that's why we have things like disruptive innovations. These are new uh, technologies and new challenges that are presented to you. um, And and as a product manager, you'll need to research them. So it's really important to be diplomatic and seek advice, seek help, seek um, information from any, any and every source you can about your customer, about your market. And you need to be very diplomatic to do that. A couple of reasons which I th- I've found from talking to a few engineers, which they're legitimate, but they're not the best reasons to move into product management. Um, the first one being you, you, you see it as an as a opportunity for career advancement. It's okay to, be, um, to seek out career advancement by any means. You want to grow your career as an as a individual and um, seeking a career ladder opportunity is okay, but it's not a great reason. And here's why. PMs again. You have to, you're you're in, you're the glue. You're the glue between a lot of different teams, and you have to accomplish your objectives through others. Which means you might need to put others' needs ahead of your own personal needs to to accomplish what's best for the business in some ways. So if you have an attitude that's that's really 
maybe aggressive or um, you're looking for the best of everything. You're the best as an individual contributor, which personally for me, I found failure very difficult. I was always succeeding in my engineer role, um, always being you know respected and recommended by my, my, my manager. But as I came into the product management role, I found that you're going to fail a lot because that's how you learn as a product manager. It's such a multifaceted role and you can't be great at everything. And when you, when you start having your first uh, slip and you're going to have it, you know, you have to kind of encounter failure and see it as an opportunity for learning and not dwell, you know, dwell on it. Um, it's going to be challenging for you. And, and people who are very career minded are not used to that level of challenge. The other aspect is if you're a technologist and you're building patents, that's great. But if you're looking at product management as a way to promote your technology, not necessarily, and, and it, but it may or may not come with a lot of customer value, uh, it's going to be very, very hard for, for you. It, um, don't get me wrong, the, the amount of patents and technologies out there are have lots of great potential, but a lot of businesses don't have the, the resources necessarily to afford large research projects. Uh, so Google's Moonshots, for example, many of these are long-term research projects for high disruptive innovation. It's great for a company like Google who has a lot of money and resources, but for a vast majority of companies, they're usually restricted by time, money, people, and resources. And for that reason, you need to make very educated guesses about what's the right path forward for the company. And for someone who has a lot of technologies that, that they wanna self-promote, is, is not necessarily the best decision for the business. Um, so what, what would a business value an engineer? And here, here are what I found as key strengths that I was able to leverage over others who were seeking product management roles. Um, as an engineer, you'll likely have, um, you'll have an advantage with um, understanding your domain really well, understanding maybe your product really well or technology pitfalls. If you haven't heard of this concept already, um, what I have shown here is something called crossing the chasm. Um, it's essentially a technology adoption curve that showcases at what point in the market is a certain technology, um, what growth level it is, what maturity level it is. An um, example I use is cryptocurrency. A lot of people are buying into cryptocurrency right now. So it's probably in the early majority stages. Since, since the price of Bitcoin is still rapidly rising, it's probably in the early majority right now. A lot of people are trying to get into this space, get into this market, and it's a very growing, it's very healthy, and it has no sign of slowing down, which you see here in the, the later majority side. Um, but the key here was that crypto coin was not easy to acquire. Right? Only the innovators, the early adopters, knew how to acquire Bitcoin. But companies like Coinbase have... Uh, crack the equation. They've, they know how to easily bring the purchasing of Bitcoin to a common end user, what we call the pragmatist. But there, there's a point in time for every technology, every product, where they face a very difficult challenge to get over what's called the chasm. The chasm is a very large gap between early adoption of, of technology enthusiasts and real users. And that gap is where most products fail. Uh, they fail to find a niche, uh, they fail to take their niches outside of their niche to a mass majority market. Uh, and that's called crossing the chasm. The reason understanding the technology is really important is because you are going to understand possible risks and pitfalls that your technology could run into. So in the example of cryptocurrency, you know, one of the technology gaps is really, it, it kind of takes a geek to figure out how to, how to purchase cryptocurrency and really understanding that point is that we need to invest in a very simple iOS interface that says one click of a button, I can buy Bitcoin. That was the key for them, Coinbase, for example, to cross the chasm. And sometimes it only takes a technologist to understand that, what, what it takes to make something as easy as a click of a button. And you're gonna have that advantage to you as an engineer. So my presentation keeps on freezing up, but hopefully that won't stop us. Um, so then the next point I had, uh, the slide's not moving, but the next point that I did have was that you, as an engineer, and especially if you are transitioning into um, within the same company, within the same product line, you're likely going to have a network of people. And since you are the glue for the company, um, it, it is going to be beneficial for you to 
um, really have the, the, the network of uh, the community and the network of people to um, work with. So you'll have the respect of your engineering teams, you'll have respect from your colleagues, and you're going to be coming into the role really looking at um, uh, with, with a lot of credibility. And, and if you're moving to a different company, credibility is the, really the toughest thing you're going to have to earn and respect from your, your peers and colleagues. Um, are we still on? Because I think it seems frozen to me. Yeah, we're still on and we can see yeah. you perfectly. Like my whole screen is actually frozen up. The web, web screen is frozen up, so it's throwing me off a little bit. So, But you guys can still hear me, it sounds like. Mm -hmm. We can still hear you okay. Um, if you want to do a quick refresh, uh, we can try that. Yeah, it's 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 not going to come back, I'm, I'm gonna, I can tell. But okay. You guys see the desktop still at least? No, I don't see the desktop. I'm, I'm still seeing the understand technology pitfalls and risks slide. Okay. But, it's uh, not but gonna, we can still hear you. Okay. It's not going to move off this slide. So I think we should just, uh, I'll, I'll, oh, there it goes. It's moving. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Little technology difficulties. Yeah. Thanks, everyone, for your patience. Something, something to take away from uh, doing demos as a product manager you never know what's going to happen in, in a production environment. Things are going to break on you. And exactly. deal with that as, as you're presenting. Um, so one of the things I, I want you guys to look for about pitfalls as an engineer. And for myself, these were these were biases that kind of happened to me in my first year as an engineer. Um, so this is very relevant for you, for the for those of you who are in the first year of product management and have recently transitioned from engineering to PM. Um, you may be very tempted to do engineering's job. You, as a PM, you need to state the what, what's the problem, and why. You know, why are we trying to solve this business problem? It has a lot of potential for customer adoption. It has a lot of potential for revenue. But you need to avoid describing the how. You shouldn't write a requirement that says, build an API for XYZ function because we need it to serve this market. You know, that, that's not a great requirement. Great requirement says, this customer has this problem and here's why why they have this problem. They're they're facing a lot of difficulty, you know, using some function of your product. That's a very good requirement. Um, the other thing that you you might be tempted to do is you might be tempted to shoot down ideas you think or know cannot meet time to market. If especially if you're coming from the the product that you were working on, you know it very deeply. You know, it's from a, from an architectural and, and code perspective, and you may be tempted to shoot down ideas from your prospects that say uh, very radical ideas in some of the cases. You might be tempted to do that, but that's not your role as a product manager. Your role is to present challenges and needs. And sometimes customers can't tell you what they want. You have to kind of figure out based on things that they're saying, um, what, what they need. And, and you might be tempted to really shoot down those ideas because they seem out of reach for your product. But it's, it's really up to your engineering team to make those calls. They need to tell you if something is unachievable, too much effort, uh, too much risk technically. Th those, those decision points need to come from your engineering teams. Um, the other aspect of it is you, you, you do need to look at um, who, who you're working with. Uh, so engineers, engineering managers, um, you may have good relationships with them but you may be spending a lot of time with them. Right? They're not necessarily the folks that you, you should be spending all of your time with to get your job done. Uh, the majority of your time should be spent with customers, with prospects and getting feedback about uh, improving your product or, or market opportunities. And as an engineer, you're, you, you might stay in your comfort zone, which is working with engineers. And that's, that's great. You're gonna be spending a lot of time with engineers, but you cannot spend any uh, one time in, in one area because it, it will not be effective for you to um, work too much internally because you're not out there learning about the market, right? Um, sorry, the screen, screen froze again. Uh, I, I wanna take away the last couple of points of how you guys can make an effective transition, um, which is really, you gotta know your strengths and your weaknesses. And just like when you're thinking about a product, you should think of yourself as a product. 
know what you're good at, know what you need some work and what are your gaps, map those out. And it'll help you craft a course for how you should be approaching filling the gaps for product management. Um, I always tell people there's a chicken and an egg problem. You can't, you, in order to become a product manager, you kind of need some of those skills. And, and it's very common for PM roles to seek out people who've already been PMs. Um, so those, those opportunities to break in are kind of difficult. They're, they're kind of more rare as what I've seen um, because the preference is for an experienced person, simply because the PM role is a leveraged role. Your role affects a lot of different teams and companies and people. For that reason, it's a really important role to hire correctly. And, and, and some managers, depending on who they are, some companies, you know, they're not willing to take the risk on uh, junior talent. So what I would like to see is what can you find to substitute your experience? So what strengths you can really use to your advantage? Um, as an engineer, uh, you'll elect, again, you'll know the technology and the domain really well. That's going to be an advantage for you if you're sticking in the same domain, sticking into the, the same product, perhaps, that you're trying to transition to. Those are all the advantages to you. Um, the other one will be that may be an advantage to you is if you work in a B2B company, many of the problems that customers have are very objective. They're functional needs. They're trying to accomplish something. They're very task-oriented. And those needs are generally more logical. And I personally found myself as an engineer, I always, we always think logically, right? We think of algorithms, we think in outcomes, very logical. And it's, it's very easy to transition that line of thinking towards a B2B type of role because most product lines are geared towards accomplishing some kind of functional objective. And that, that should be easier to build customer empathy for. B2C products are more gonna align with deeper customer empathy. Um, a social media product like Instagram, right? Not a lot of functional features and objective things you need to do with the product. It's more about how do you share your content, how the person feels about sharing content, and, and what, are the, what, are the, what is the experience? What is the user experience you need to bring in that product? And that's gonna require a very deep level of customer empathy skill, um, which, why, which is why you might find a person who spent their life in marketing or customer engagement is it has better skills suited for a B2C company. So um, without knowing all of your backgrounds, what you, want to, what you want to map out is what's your strengths and what are your weaknesses and how, how can you find opportunities to really uh, fill those gaps. Um, th this was the slide I wanted to show for that, but that's okay. Um, the last thing um, I want to take, take you guys away with is um, if you have an opportunity to transition internally, Generally, it's easier. I, I personally transitioned internally with this, within the product I was working on to the product I was now managing. And then from there on, as you gain, gain your skill as a PM, you'll find opportunities inside and outside the company to work on products, you, industries you've never worked on, uh, just because you generally get more experience. And, and so my recommendation is do take internal opportunities more seriously. Um, I personally took a leadership opportunity. I became a manager of of engineering. And that helped me build diplomacy. It helped me build credibility, visibility, um, which were instrumental in really helping me get things done. Um, ultimately, what people praised me for in my role is um, I, I move really quickly. I move on decisions really quickly, and I'm able to operationalize a plan very effectively. Over, over, over this, so my first role was executing uh, a roadmap someone else built, a PRD someone else built. Um, but that allowed me to uh, really spend my time learning about the strategic aspects of their role. Um, and, and ultimately, I, they, they saw that potential in me. Not only could I execute, I also think very logically and right for the business. And they promoted me to the lead product manager for, for the product line. Um, so again, find those stepping stones. Find opportunities that make sense, that fill in the gaps. And at the same time, are jobs and roles that you're, you, you, you'll find yourself happy with. It's, it's always important to find um, satisfaction in every role you take. Um, with that, um, I'll, I'll take any questions that you guys might have. Awesome, thank you so much um, for the presentation and everything and uh, thanks everybody for your patience um, with the screen. Uh, we do have a couple questions coming in uh, as well. So here I'm gonna go ahead and pull our first one from Zach. 
Uh, what's the best way to reach out to customers and users? So this is a this is a really interesting one. It really depends on your industry and your product, but generally you're going to want to find out where people aggregate. Where do they discuss about their problems, their needs, and their interests? Cryptocurrency, as an example, again, a lot of people focus on Reddit. There's a lot of conversation on Reddit, and that's where people hang out. My industry, it's an IT industry. People don't hang out on Reddit. They they go to they go to conferences. They go to IT community channels. Sometimes they just one-on-one -on -one message each other. The key really is finding out where people hang out. And when they discuss, you jump in and, and provide your insight, your advice. At some point, you'll be presented an opportunity to ask them questions about, you know, what do you think about this product idea or what do you think about this need? Okay, awesome. Um, our uh, we have a couple minutes. So guys, um, just make sure you type in your questions um, before then so we can get to them. We have another question here from Ratul. Um, how, what's your advice to switch to product management from a uh, user experience? Um, so for user experience, it sounds like you'll have a very deep knowledge of the customer. Um, so you'll have pretty good empathy about, it. I think the one limiting thing I've heard from UX designers is they don't have technical background. Um, technical background is not a necessity for product management, um, but it is advantageous because engineering is your most common stakeholder. Um, so I guess the, the recommendation here is to really try to learn about teams you don't know about, teams, because you'll, you'll work with every team at some point. Find a team who team member on a, that you don't know a lot about. So maybe find an engineer who, who you are close with, you know, talk to them about their challenges, their problems, and really just get comfortable with talking about and asking questions about their problems that'll generally help you flex that muscle to build empathy more dynamically. Cause you're gonna to need to build empathy, not just with your customers, but also internally. Like what are they struggling with on an implementation? What are they struggling with, with customer support volume? Those kinds of things, uh, customer empathy in general is just really the, the key skill you'll need for PM. Right, absolutely. Um, here, we have another uh, question coming in from Zara. Um, my background is in programming and education. I'm looking to transition into a PM role in education technology. Do you have any recommendations for filling in my gap on the business side? Mm. So, so, the, so this particular role, it sounds like you're a domain expert, industry expert, and you come with a lot of knowledge about um, education. Um, and the question was filling your gap with business knowledge. Now, uh, depending on the company, the level of business knowledge may or may not be as important. Uh, it it kind of depends on, on the company itself. Some companies prefer MBAs. Amazon prefers MBAs, for example. They recruited a lot of people out of UCLA, and they prefer a lot of people who have that ability to build business cases and financial models. But, a lot of, but not every company is like that. Some companies are just looking for subject matter experts, SMEs. And so the, the real key here is, is to find informational interviews for positions you're inter interested in, not necessarily with the recruiting manager, but with people in your network. So if you're targeting a company and you look through your LinkedIn profile and you found a person you might be able to connect with through one of your connections, ask them for an informational interview and just ask them to learn about their company and how, how their culture is. Do they, are they very business savvy? Are they very user savvy or are they very product savvy? Try to learn about what, how, they're, how they operate. Awesome. Um, we had a few more come in, um, but we're almost out of time. So um, if we have some time later, we'll get to those in the comments and, and drop some responses sure. to those as well. Um, so before we go, um, what advice would you have for aspiring product managers out there? Um, again, it's, it's know your strengths, manage yourself like a product, you know, as you're interviewing, um, know your strengths, know your weaknesses, know, know your competitive advantages. Engineers come with a few of them, um, just from a technical standpoint, uh, and really use, use that to your, to your advantage. It's not enough to just, just to express interest as, as you guys have probably already figured that out. Um, you need to, you need to know very deeply what the, what the business would value in your skill set. And part of that, that internal networking and informational interviews is really key to knowing what they value. Yes, there are companies like Google and Amazon who have a very standard rigorous PM interview process and there's not much room for informational interviews. Um, but uh, 
you know, not everyone should be shooting there necessarily. If it, there, there are programs and curriculums, of course, that help help you build that school and product school. From what I've seen, is a very, very great organization to help you build some of that PM knowledge. Um, but, but know know what you have an advantage over others. Awesome. Um, thank you again, Joey. Really appreciate your time today and uh, sharing with us. All right. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. And um, guys, uh, to get more information on us, you know, you can go to productschool.com. Uh, we'll see you at next week's talk. Thanks. Okay. Bye. Bye.